So let's start this lesson by focusing on the part of the kidney involved in filtration, reabsorption, and excretion. Here we see our typical schematic of the nephron with the afferent arterial, glomerular capillaries, efferent arterial, peritubular capillaries, and nephron segment. Now fractional excretion is defined as the ratio of the amount of substance excreted relative to the filtered load. In other words, the fractional excretion of a substance equals the clearance of that substance divided by the glomerular filtration rate. And fractional excretion is typically expressed as a percentage when multiplied by 100. As a reminder, clearance of a substance equals the urinary concentration of that substance times the urinary flow divided by the plasma concentration of that substance. Likewise, glomerular filtration rate is equal to the clearance of inulin or creatinine. So now that we know the formula to calculate fractional excretion, let's use it to calculate the fractional excretion of sodium. Given a plasma sodium concentration of 135 millimoles per liter, a urine sodium concentration of 135 millimoles per liter, a urine flow rate of one milliliter per minute, a plasma creatinine concentration of 0.8 milligrams per deciliter, and a urine creatinine concentration of 100 milligrams per deciliter. Now using the formula, we see that the fractional sodium excretion for these values equals 1%. Now 1% or slightly less is considered a normal fractional sodium excretion. Now let's use this schematic of the nephron to explain. We'll start by plotting the fractional sodium excretion in blue and reabsorption of sodium in red as sodium travels along the nephron. Now we know that 65 to 85 percent of the filtered sodium is reabsorbed along the proximal tubule, leaving 35 percent of the filtered load in the ultrafiltrate as it exits the proximal tubule. At this point, the total amount reabsorbed is 65 percent, while the fractional excretion would be 35 percent if no more reabsorption were to occur. However, we know that an additional 20 percent of the filtered sodium is reabsorbed along the thick ascending limb, which puts the reabsorption total at about 85 percent of the filtered sodium load and the fractional excretion at 15 percent as it leaves the thick ascending limb. An additional 10 percent of the filtered sodium load is reabsorbed along the distal tube which puts the reabsorption total at about 95% of the filtered sodium load and the fractional excretion at 5% as it enters the connecting segment and cortical collecting duct, where an additional 1 to 5% of the filtered sodium load is reabsorbed, which puts the total reabsorption of sodium at about 99% of the filtered sodium load and an average fractional sodium excretion of 1%. With this understanding, we can use the fractional sodium excretion to evaluate renal function. For example, patients taking diuretics, which inhibit the reabsorption of sodium along specific nephron segments, will have an increased fractional sodium excretion. Likewise, a fractional sodium excretion less than 1% is indicative of decreased renal perfusion, typically in the context of hyponatremia or volume depletion, or increased sodium reabsorption like that seen in Little syndrome. Also, a fractional sodium excretion above 2 or 3 percent could be due to acute tubular necrosis or another form of kidney damage. 